is Professor Mark Higdon. Uh, this video will walk you through how to develop a knit pants sketch in Illustrator on Blackboard in class four folder. There is an image that I uploaded, which is a women's uh, knit gap pair of pants. If you could download that and we'll work with that. You would create a new file in the Illustrator and we'll call this knit pants. If you would make the width eight and a half and the height 11, keep your color mode in red, green, blue. And the raster effect should be 300. And you can hit create. Open up your layers window. Uh, so you have the ability to put the image on one layer and your sketch on another. So on the first layer, if you would do a file place, and let's see, bring my desktop here, bring in the knit pants, and I will place it. On that layer, in the layers window, I will lock it. I will then create another layer, left click on the pull down menu, and go to new layer. And we'll call this the sketch. So when I draw this, um, I'm going to do the same method as I did with the t-shirt where I will draw one leg, make a copy of it, flip it, and then join it at the waistband and at the point of intersection. I will draw a separate box for the waistband and I'll show you how to do a zigzag waistband. So with the pen tool, put my first point here, and this is just a point of reference, the image, so, uh, and I'm going to put another box with the waistband on top of that. My second point will be on the out, on the right hand side. My third point will be a little underneath the hip area, and since this is rounded, I'll left click and drag the pen tool so that the line is curved. Before I move on, because it's a curved line, I have to left click on the last anchor point. Then I'll come down to the bottom of the knit fabric portion and I'll create a separate box with the zigzag for the um, bottom hem area. And I'll make another point on the inside of the pant leg. And my last point will be at the point of intersection of the inseams. I'll then select this shape. I'm not continuing all the way up because I need to have this portion open in order to join it. So I'll go to the selection tool, or hit the V key on my keypad. If I hold down the option key or the alt key on a PC, I work primarily on a Mac here. Left click and you can then drag a copy. With this copy, I'll right click on my mouse down to transform and reflect. A reflection window will pop open. Make sure you have your vertical checked. The preview is checked so you can see it flipped. And you can click OK. Now I have a copy that's flipped over. With the selection tool, left click on that shape and move it over to the other side of the pair of pants. I'll zoom in a little bit so I don't have to uh, strain and I can see the area a little closer. So with the command key or the control key on a PC and then the plus key, command plus or control plus, you can zoom in. I'll left click on the background so nothing is selected. Now I need to join these two points here and these points here so that it's a continuous shape using the direct selection tool or the A key on your keypad, starting above on the upper left hand side, left click and drag a box around the two open endpoints. Then either do Command J or Control J if you're on a PC and it will join the top edge. I'll left click off into the background so it's deselected. Because this area is so tight, I'm going to do um, a little bit more of a precise method in which to select the two anchor points to join them. So with the select direct selection tool, left click once on the left anchor point, hold down the shift key to keep that anchor point 
selected. Then I'll left click on the right anchor point. That has now selected the entire shape. If I do a Command J or a Control J, it will then join those two points. So I now have a continuous shape of pants. This is a little squared off here, so with the direct selection tool, I can left click on an anchor point and move it in so that it's not so square. And I can do it for both sides. Now to create the waistband at the top, <clears throat> I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'll draw a box just over the top area here. I'll select it and then left click on the background to deselect it. With the pen tool, I'll left click once on the left hand side and you'll notice that when I move the, the pen up and down, it actually will tell me when I'm in the midpoint of that line. So I'll left click once where I see the intersect over to the other side and if I hold down the shift key before I left click again on the other side it will give me a line that's perfectly across. <clears throat> I'll select that line so I can just hit the V key, V is in Victor, on your keypad. Come up to the top pull down menu for effect. Come down to distort and transform and zigzag. This will give you another pop-up window, check preview, and you can slide the slider for the size, which will affect the height. And if you slide the ridges per segment to the right, you will increase the number of ridges, depending on how many you want to add. So I'm going to do about 24, 25. Click OK. If I then, with the selection tool, drag a box around the waistband and the zigzag, I've not selected the pants. I can group it, come up to the top and go to Object Group, or the shortcut on my Mac is the Command key A. On your PC, it's Control A, or sorry, Control G, or Command G. Then I can move this down depending, oops, let's see, let's make sure I have them both. Object group, it is grouped. Okay, great, so I should be able to move this down. Let's try this one more time. Grab the line. If I hold the shift key, I can then grab the box. Go to object group, now I'm grouped. Great. So when I select this, I can move it down. If I want to bring in the top corners, go to the direct selection tool, grab the corner, and you can should be able to bring it in on the box. Yeah, there we go. Do it on the other side. Sometimes it helps to zoom in even more. I can bring it in. So that finishes off. And if I have to, I can actually move the line in just to neaten it up. There we go. To do the bottom portion, I can do the same thing. Make a box with the rectangle tool. Select it. Select off it. Use the pen tool. Put a line across in the center. Select that, hit the V key on your keypad. Come up to Effect, down to Distort and Transform, Zigzag. Again, you can slide the slide for both the size and the ridges. And you can adjust it to what you want it to be. Hit OK. With the selection tool, select both the box and the zigzag. Group it so you can do object group. Move it into position. If you want with the direct selection tool, you can actually bring the bottom edge corner in a little bit. 
and then make a copy of it and may, uh, hold down the Option key or the Alt key on your keypad and you can drag it over to the other side. And the only other thing I want to add in is the front rise line here. So with the stroke window, and if your stroke window isn't open, you can go to window at the top, come down to stroke, check the dashed line. It may default at 12, depending on when your last work session was and if you restarted your computer. So I usually do six for the point and six for the gap. And then with the pen tool, I will put in a broken line to show the top stitching. And if I want a double top line, I can make a copy of it. And then I want to put just a solid line down the center to show the seam. I can just do a solid line. Okay, so I'm going to end that here. And I'll have a second part to show another method in terms of a waistband. Thank you.